Get Rugged's a Scottish charity, passionate about encouraging more people to self-build. What we're aiming to do is to inspire people to take back control of their housing needs and create a home of their own, using all natural materials sourced from their local environment. And the project that we're doing, we're doing it with Heartwin, and we've created a pop-up learning village of students from all over the world. They've all came together, some have got absolutely no experience at all of self-building and they're done. they've started this from nothing. And now, as you'll see, we've built a house. When I've seen natural builds and natural buildings, it's just a real softness and uh, like an organic sense, like the same thing I feel when I'm out in the woods or on the mountains, like this, it's more gentle. So, so excited. I knew right away this was exactly what I wanted to do. This was everything I wanted in one big package. A lot of the techniques we're using in this build and all our builds are traditional heritage building techniques. There's been lots of uh, clever development over many hundreds of years uh, using uh, materials that are found in the area local to where you're building to build good quality homes. It's taken us back to what we used to do. Using lime in a stone foundation, uh, clay plastering, cob building. These are all techniques that have been used for you know, hundreds, if not thousands of years in the UK. I mean, it's sort of, whenever you're trying to knit round with square, it's quite challenging. Uh, boulders and things like that, things that are inherently not square, and then you try to you know, match and meet those with things that are square, sawn timber and, and, and such. Um, that is always quite a head scratcher, but not necessarily always in a bad way. It's, it's always really fun to try and problem solve and, and, and figure out those things. You know, good design we think should work with um, a small number of materials that are ideally locally sourced and then can be sort of crafted or um, worked by hand um, with minimal of impact. We're trying to build with local materials using timbers from uh, you know, the neighbouring estates locally milled. You know, we're trying to build truly vernacular buildings that are actually part of their landscape because they are made of the landscape. We've got proven track records of buildings that have stood for you know, hundreds of years so we know very well that, that those materials and techniques work. So the way we work is we try and combine modern building science and, and understanding of, of how buildings need to perform with these heritage techniques and materials. The wisdom of before the Industrial Revolution or before we were using these things so intensively is we can still draw on that and we can bring in technologies that are new. Putting on the rafters, we were working in big teams, uh, so really quite heavy bits of wood uh, and also quite awkward because of the length. So um, we had a scaffold uh, and also Jeffrey was up the top in the inner henge um, and we had a team that were actually passing the uh, rafters up through the posts. And then we had to fit boards of Douglas fir sort of to cover each step. So almost uh, to create a ladder in between two rafters, sort of as a block. So then we could put the pond liner and then the turf on, so nothing would come through. But then also, so it looks nice if you're looking up, you've got this pattern of all these lines going in. Getting up on the roof for the first time was pretty was pretty amazing. You know, you spend such a lot of time in the ground and then building the frame, and then when you finally clamber up a ladder and up onto the roof, uh, and you you realise that you're up in the sky and you're sat on something that didn't exist until a few weeks ago. Uh, I think that's pretty cool as well. Below our feet is an earth floor that starts with um, a big fat layer of blade pour insulation, which is a it's uh, recycled car windscreens that's put through a furnace and puffed up, kind of like a crunchy bar. This is a fantastic use of the material um, because it creates a free draining foundation that is really insulating. On top of that, we've put our underfloor heating pipes um, that will allow us to heat up the, all the thermal mass that's in our earth floor. And then on top of the pipes goes 150 mil of uh, base pour, we call it, uh, the, the lower level. So that's building up a big chunk of thermal mass. 
Uh, we, in this build, have done that using a uh, rammed earth technique. So that is kind of a dry mix that we've tamped down. Um, we've used uh, people power. So we had a big dance party on top of the, the floor to compact it all down. It was a lot of fun. My favourite part of the build for me has definitely been the uh, straw bale section. Um, I really appreciate the material itself, it's a very interesting material to use. Each straw bale it was individually manipulated, cut, shaved, moved, chopped down, retightened, and put in place specifically for each part of the wall so no one bale was the same. What we had to do before we fitted the straw bales onto the ladder or between the ladder sections was to get some wooden stakes which we foraged uh, from nearby trees. Uh, we took them back to site, we then um, axed them into spikes. They were then placed into the ladder, all around the ladder, around the building for the straw bales to then be placed onto in order to keep the straw bales in place. What is yeah, immensely empowering about this whole process is the fact that you, you, can, you can build your own house but a lot of it is not that complicated. You know, if, you, if you, you watch somebody else who has the skills do it, and then you realize that actually it's a, it's a thing that you can do yourself. I think, I think what's difficult is that actually uh, building in this way requires a lot of people. It requires a lot of teamwork. Um, and that in itself is brilliant because it, 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 it brings you together as a community. It's so easy to get caught up in, say, filling in the wall with clay and just, it's like it's not a satisfying process. Just there's no end result, you're just sort of jabbing in and jabbing in and it's just really easy to get frustrated because it takes hours and you hurt your hands. But to actually go, oh yeah, if I don't do this, I can't do the next step. We're all learning and none of us have really done, people come at different levels of experience but none of us have done this before, this level of detail and the amount of different techniques. Every day we've done a different thing, like talking to all the other students about you know, favourite task and favourite job and favourite skill. We've learned so much in just a month. seemed like it could be a bit overwhelming at first, like how the heck do you start building a house, but actually if you just break it down and you work on each section sequentially, get that complete and then you can move on. And I think that's a really big part that I've found useful. Um, specific skills like carpentry skills, um, use of different saws, especially like I didn't have a lot of knowledge of using different types of saws, different types of tools. Um, and so yeah, learning each tool, how it's used and getting efficient with it, really enjoyed that and that's something I'll take forward. I've really grown in confidence. So there've been low, every kind of week you get new challenges that um, are things completely, completely new to you. And initially they kind of seem daunting or you think I'm not gonna be able to do that or I'm gonna have to get someone else to help me. And as the build goes on, you kind of realize more and more that you can do things you didn't think you're gonna be able to. So it's quite a, quite a general confidence boost. Step by step we go through the build, all the while gradually increasing skill and competence. Uh, and as you get towards the end of the build, your competence and skills increased. When you start to do the finer detail work, you've already had quite an immersive experience and improved your skill. And then you get to the end and uh, you have built an entire house. The minute I got here I just knew that it was so right and it was the right decision. I feel like I've learned so much that I can't even comprehend 
how much has actually gone in. I feel like I'm going to need to sit down for a really long time just to process and think, wow, I've actually been part of building a house. How incredible is that? What's been really, really wonderful about this whole experience is realising that there's a whole gang of us out there who are striving towards the same kind of things. Everybody here has come from completely different backgrounds. Some of us with no building experience before, some with little bits. Every day we've picked up a new skill, we've learnt a new technique or about a new technology and we've all, we've done it. We've mixed lime and we've used chisels to, to make smooth cuts and the skills progress so quickly. 